Today we're going to build this video game stand slash display thing on four eyes. I've had a long love affair with video games, and Nintendo in particular. I still vividly remember sitting on the couch with my brother when the word came down that we were going to go get an NES. Or six years later, the Christmas morning we got a Super Nintendo. And somehow it doesn't feel like it was that long ago that my parents took me to stand outside of a Best Buy on a Sunday morning to get an N64. A task I would repeat twice some 20 years later to get these little guys. The NES and the SNES Classic. Only this time at Target, and without requiring a chauffeur. So, why am I building this stand display thing? Truth be told, the consoles do get used, and my son and I have definitely logged some hours on Excitebike, various Mario vehicles, and Castlevania titles. But probably not as many as I would have thought. And while we love and have fun playing with them, at the end of the day, the thing that I actually like most about the classic systems is just looking at them. After I'd roughed out the three basic pieces that are going to make up this stand, the top, the back, and the angled shelf, I headed over to the planer to get everything down to the proper dimensions. The top and the back are going to be about three quarters of an inch thick, but that felt like it was just a little bit too much for the shelf. It just made the whole thing feel a little bit too clunky from the side. So I planed that part down to right around a half of an inch thick. Hey, kind of looks like Rob. Next, I tilted my table saw blade to 15 degrees and made a few cuts. First, I cut this bevel on the underside of the top shelf. There's no construction reason for this, but I think it just aesthetically lightens the top. So you could really cut this at any angle you wanted, or none at all. Next, I cut a 15 degree bevel on the lower shelf. You could technically not cut this as well, but then it would meet the ground at a kind of funny angle. Here's a little drawing to show you what the difference would look like. Finally, the last cut that I made with my blade set here was on the foot of the back piece. This will make the back tilt forward by 15 degrees instead of being vertical. Next, I set my blade to 37 and a half degrees and cut a bevel on the top of the back piece and the back of the top piece, basically the corner where those two pieces join. These cuts will combine to make an obtuse angle that's 105 degrees, or 15 degrees more than 90 degrees. And that's going to offset the fact that the back leans forward 15 degrees. So that'll yield a top shelf that's parallel to the ground. Talking about it probably makes it sound a little bit more difficult than it really is, especially since you could reference angles from two sides. So one person could think of something as 75 degrees, and another could think of it as 105, but both are really saying the same thing. But anyway, hopefully seeing these drawings makes it more clear. Next, I cut a dado, or I guess technically a groove, into the back piece to receive the shelf. For as technical as that last part sounded, I'm going to try to make this part simple. So basically, hold the pieces together and strike a line. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know each time I post a new video. With all the pieces fitting together nicely, I moved on to routing a slot for some cord management in the back. You can see in this shot that I set a couple stop blocks up so that I can consistently route from the same starting point to the same ending point. But this was the first time that I'd actually done something like this, so I just kind of took my time and was extra careful. And then the last thing that I did before assembling was a little pre-sanding on some of the spots that would be harder to reach later on. Here I'm rounding over some of my corners, because I don't like them square. But you know what I do like square? Or Squarespace rather? My website building software. Cheesy segues aside, this is actually a really good time of year to consider making your next move with Squarespace. It's the end of the year, you're probably setting new goals for yourself. And personally speaking, at this time last year, I remember one of my goals was to start getting my website in order, and that was when I made the move to Squarespace, and I'm honestly super thankful that I did. 
For me, the best part has been how easy Squarespace makes it to update my site while maintaining a really slick looking page thanks to their award-winning templates. Most recently, I wanted to add a page to my site to link all the products that I use that I'm frequently asked about. This way, rather than answer individual questions, I can just send people here and help them out. So rather than telling you how easy it is, I figured I'd just record myself doing it and show you. Suffice it to say, it's really easy. Seriously, if you're thinking about starting a website, or even if you have an existing one, check them out. Right now you can test things out with a free trial and save 10% on your first order by visiting the link below and using the offer code 4 eyes at checkout. Thanks Squarespace. Not only for the support, but for making my digital life a little bit easier. All right, back to the build. So with everything sanded and ready to go, I moved on to the glue up. Since this piece is so small and has weird angles, I thought the tape method seemed most appropriate. So after I had lots of pieces of tape on the back between the top and the back piece, I flipped everything over and started gluing. The tape method actually works best if you're making a box so that you can fold the whole thing up and there's pressure to keep all the gaps closed while things dry, but here there was only one joint. So I rigged up this little fence thing with some clamps and scraps so that I could apply a tiny bit of pressure to hold the gap shut. Hopefully you're able to get a couple quick peeks in while my son's head isn't in the way. After that dried, I glued the shelf piece into the groove. No clamps or jigs needed here. As I said earlier in the video, and despite the slight amount of embarrassment I feel admitting it, my favorite part about these systems is just looking at them. I mean, these things have earned their place in the pantheon of quintessential late 80s, early 90s goodness, beside the likes of Ecto Cooler High C and Reebok pumps. And even though today, they're relegated to being mostly just decorations, it's nice to know that when I want to, I can flip them on, put a beating on Bear Hugger, and remember the simpler times. And while the games are still good, the memories are better. Special thanks to Jesse Perez, Jan Ostberg, Ole Jorgen Garden, Johnny Builds, Bryce Dowser, Jessica Cummins, Andrew Bresseau, Mondo Gonzalez, and the rest of my Patreon members for making these videos possible. You are my largest and most reliable source of funding. And simply put, I couldn't do what I'm doing without you. So, thank you. If you want to find out more about how you can support the show too, check out the Patreon link in the description. And as always, no pressure. See you next time.